Here's your Forbes Daily Briefing for Monday, March 18th. Today on Forbes, Tanzania's richest man wants to be Africa's biggest farmer if everyone gets out of his way. Puffing on a nicotine vape and seated on a white leather chair in his $50 million home in Dubai, Mohamed Mo Duji is waxing poetic about his plans to mechanize farming 2,500 miles away. A framed photograph of a street in Zanzibar, the Tanzanian archipelago famous for lush white beaches, hangs on a wall behind him. The 48-year-old billionaire, who was born, raised, and until recently, lived in Tanzania, says, quote, I want to make Africa, long term, a food basket for the world. Why the hell are we not investing in Agra? Duji is well known in Tanzania, Africa's fifth largest country with a population of 70 million. The football team owner and former politician controls a range of businesses through his consumer goods conglomerate, METL Group, including textile manufacturing, edible oil refineries, and his Mo Cola carbonated beverages line, which, if you didn't guess already, is named after himself. METL already grows crops like tea, avocados, and sisal, a natural fiber used in rope, all of which are vertically integrated into his other businesses. Now Duji wants to grow his agribusiness empire by orders of magnitude. He is seeking to invest $250 million, including 100 million of his own capital, to buy and mechanize 100,000 hectares of farmland in Tanzania. METL would use the crops to feed its own businesses, then sell the surpluses to other Tanzanian firms, African countries, and even European customers. Duji says this, quote, vision came to him in the aftermath of Russia's invasion of Ukraine as soaring food and fertilizer prices worsened conditions of poverty and malnutrition in Africa. Agriculture accounts for one-third of Tanzania's annual GDP of $75 billion, but roughly 90% of that farming is done by subsistence farmers tilling less than five hectares of land each. As a result, food insecurity in Tanzania is widespread. Over 30% of children are stunted, and 13 million Tanzanians live in extreme poverty, while, quote, many others live just above the poverty line, according to the U.S. Agency for International Development. That's despite Tanzania being the second biggest receiver of foreign aid in sub-Saharan Africa, behind only Ethiopia, between 1990 and 2010, receiving $26.85 billion. One of those aid suppliers, the World Bank, acknowledges that Tanzania, quote, still faces stubbornly high levels of poverty, in part as a result of dependence on low-productivity agriculture. Bigger, more efficient farms could help solve Tanzanians' hunger problem. A recent European Commission paper found that in developing countries, quote, larger farms tend to be more efficient than their smaller counterparts. According to a UN study, within Africa, increasing agricultural productivity was, quote, a substantial driver of growth and poverty reduction in Ethiopia, Ghana, Malawi, Rwanda, and Uganda, in contrast to Tanzania and those countries where farming growth lagged. But agribusiness also comes with costs. Human displacement, environmental degradation, and disruption of local trading networks upending entire communities. Duji says the benefits outweigh the cons. He says, quote, Life goes on for the villagers, but in a much better scenario. Given Duji's prominence, any success or failure will have a big impact within Tanzania and potentially beyond. Margaret McMillan, an economics professor at Tufts University who studies economic development in East Africa, has lived in Tanzania and heard Duji make his agribusiness pitch at a recent conference, says, quote, This is larger than Tanzania. A success here would have implications for the continent as a whole. If he could use it as a flagship to show how large-scale farming can be done successfully, that would be amazing. That is Duji's long-term plan. He wants to prove his agribusiness model works in Tanzania, then raise money from global investors to replicate it in other African countries. His dream is to invest over $1 billion across 400,000 hectares, about the size of Rhode Island, or 0.3% of Tanzania's total landmass, across at least three countries, including Zambia and Mozambique. Duji assured Forbes, quote, I spoke to the Zambian president, I spoke to the Mozambique president, but I said, guys, let me work it out in my home country first because I understand the intricacies. 
let me show a project for Africa. For full coverage, check out John Hyatt's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.